Hey, how's it going? This is Hellbent, and welcome to Auto Hotkey GUI Mini Tutorial number 23. In uh, this one, we're going to be looking at the drop down list. Um, I had already done a couple of runs of this, and the time was right about an hour each time. So, what I'm going to do, rather than making you sit through an hour long tutorial, is I'm going to break this up into parts, and they'll be their own individual tutorials so each tutorial will have the header I don't know uh, drop down list and then for the other ones I might add something to that so it'll be drop down list such and such alright so it'll be easy for you to find because I don't know if I'm necessarily going to do them all and record them all in a row um, depending on if you know if only five people watch this tutorial after a month there's really no point in me making uh, the second part to it or if uh, <clears throat> this gets 10 thumbs down and uh, right away there's not really much point in me doing a second part to it so we'll see how it goes when the next parts come out but they won't be mini tut number 23 they'll be whatever they are okay so I, I right now I have my basic GUI I have a, I've made its background black. I've set its margin 20 uh, pixels more than it normally is, so it's plus 20 on the margins. And I've let it size itself. So this is something that I don't usually do. Usually I make it so it's you know 500 by 500 or whatever. But we're going to let it size itself for this one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create our drop-down list. So just like our other controls, we just do GUI add and then the name of the control. So in our case, it's drop-down list. And then unlike some of our other controls that have text on them, we cannot control the color or if there is a way to control the color of the text, I'm sure it's a painful procedure that you're not actually going to want to do. So, long story short, you can't change the color. We're going to position it on the X margin. The X margin, so it'll position it, I think it's about 30 pixels in and 30 pixels down. We're not going to, yeah, we'll do the Y margin as well. We're going to set its width to 200, but it's, this control is capable of sizing itself. <clears throat> self, but generally speaking, when you're creating a GUI, you want to actually specify the size of your controls. For the most part, I personally do. You might have a different opinion on the subject, so use your best judgment. Unlike um, some of our other controls, we're not going to actually size it by its height we're going to instead use rows so depending on the font size that we select it will adjust itself to that so we're just going to set it to um, 10 rows now by default if we do not set the amount of rows it'll show everything that's in our drop down list up to somewhere about 30 so it'll show up to 30 items in our drop down list when we when we select our drop down list to to open it up and show whatever's in it it'll be up to somewhere around 30 in other words we can specify how many now regardless of whether we put this in here or not if there's only five items in our drop down list it's only going to show it's only going to be large enough to show those five items it's not going to show 10 lines worth or five extra lines worth of uh, blank space okay so we have its size and position now what we're going to do is we are going to associate a variable with it. I'm just going to call it DDL for drop down list. Very original, right? And um, I'm going to attach this to a label. But we don't need to do this to a label because what we're going to do later on is going to get rid of our need for this. Um, <clears throat> actually, you know what? There will be cases maybe it is better to do it, attach it to a label. So we're, I'm going to call this, I'm going to attach it to a label called submit all. And all this label is going to do is normally in my normal operation, it's just going to go into a label and inside that label it's going to have GUI submit. Okay, so now that we have our variable, we have our size, we have the label that we have attached to, now we need to go ahead and create our list. So if we want to create our list right here in our GUI, which I don't recommend once you get into the longer list but if it's just a couple items in your list there's no real problem with doing it right here but uh, as we go through the other tutorials you'll see 
uh, reasons why it's better to not have it built in here but let's say for this example we want to build it in here and I'm going to create three items so I'm going to do item one and then beside that item I put a pipe or I hold shift and press that key there and then I do the next item item two pipe item three pipe okay so we put our item in and then immediately afterwards we put our pipe item pipe item pipe all right now if I run this oh I forgot to create my I cre made I said go to this label but it doesn't exist so let's create that label down here submit all and for the moment all it's going to do is submit oh. submit no hide so we're going to take we're going to put into our associated variable the value that we get and so that we can see what it's putting into it we'll also create a tool tip in here and we will display the value that's going to be stored in DDL or the variable associated with our control <clears throat> So if I save that, run it now. Because this is the top control in our GUI, it's automatically been focused. So all we would have to do now is we can either click this arrow and that'll expand our list. Or if it's focused like this, what we can also do is use our arrow. Likewise, if we, which I'll come into in a bit, but if we have our specifically, especially if our list is alphabetical order, what I can do is I can type the first character in the name of that or those so if, if I had let's say five items with the letter A as the first letter or five items with B five items with C all I would have to do is hit B and if I want to go to the something that starts with B I just type I just select here press B and it'll bring me to the first item that starts with the letter B I can also with it selected like this I can use my arrow key to go between them and I can see on my tooltip what's selected um, let's see completely brain farted right now um, let's uh, let's look at alphabetizing it so I'm gonna create instead of putting it in here I'm gonna do I'm gonna create a variable up here that's going to contain that list and then I'm just going to put that variable in here all right so I'm going to call my variable list and I'm going to set it to a value of the alphabet a b And I think that's 10 items. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, that's good for me. So now to include this as my drop down list, all I need to do is just include that variable. So I'm going to do percent and then give it a space and drop in a list. Likewise, I could also do percent list percent. And it's the exact same thing. But we'll leave it like that and we will run and now we should get this as our list when we go through our tooltip and everything like that so if I go through I can see that it's going through our alphabet and I have it right there as well <clears throat> now if we noticed each time we run it we start with a blank space if we want one of these specific values to be the first item that pops up all we have to do is where we have the pipe for it we just double it up so if I put two pipes after a a will now show up as our first thing in our list likewise if we were to do E now E is going to be the thing that shows up in our list one of the good things about having that space there is we can actually rather than um, put
putting some kind of indication of what this list is about, what we can do is we can use that, that first position that showed up, that blank space, when we ran it, let me see, this first blank space, what we can do is we can use this as, a, as an indicator of what this list is about. So right here what I'm going to do is, before it pops up our list, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a string of text that I'm going to say alpha and then I'm going to put double pipes so that this is the thing that shows up so that, that way I have an indicator of what this list it has contains in it so if I run it now I see that this list is about the alphabet right and what I would have to do is in my code down here wherever I'm using this in my scripting I would have to make it so that way this gets omitted so if this is the value that is being stored in the uh, variable DDL in our script we would just say that if the value of DDL is equal to alpha ignore it don't do anything with it in other words do something else with the other stuff okay so that's that there um, now what we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to make it so that way we alphabetize things. So let's take this letter A and we're going to change it with the letter F and the letter F with the letter A. So now if I run this, I no longer have it in alphabetical order. I start with F and then I down here I have A. That's not usually how you're going to want your list. So what we can do up in here is we can just type in in the options. And usually I like to have these before. I usually like to leave the last two positions before the actual output of it or what it's displaying. I like to leave that as my variable and then the label. So I'll put this over here. Sort. So I have a... I have a a way of that I build my GUI so that way I can easily go look through its options and see what the options are I can see what the variable is because I know it's always pretty much always in the same position as I go through the list of controls that I have so this is one of the things that I'll put before my variable and then my variable usually goes before my label but this is just my preference you can do it any way you want there's no difference so now we have up here where F is the first thing in our list, but because we've done sort, A should be the thing that pops up first. So there we go. It's alphabetized our list. And <clears throat> what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new list to actually do some programming with it. So I'm going to create a list of colors just to keep this simple. And so that way you can actually uh, see a use for this. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to display this list of colors. I'm going to alphabetize them so that they're in the correct order. And then down here I'm going to create a button because I don't want... I don't want this code to get executed as I cycle through it because right now as I run this if I'm using my arrow key or something like that each time I go down it will execute this submit all command so I don't want I don't want to do what the ex, what I want to do with this as I'm scrolling through it I want to wait until I'm done so I'll add a button and the button's going to be the thing that actually executes it I'm going to attach this to a label called do something. Because why not? And we got some text on our button that says press me. So now that I have that I'm going to actually come down here and create that label and all we're gonna do is we're gonna take whatever we got whatever we end up storing in our DDL variable we're gonna come into this label and then we're gonna do something with that value so 
first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure everything's been submitted properly. So GUI submit. No hide. <clears throat> and then what I'm going to do is I am going to change the color of the GUI. GUI color. And then the color is going to be whatever the value that's stored in our DDL variable. So I'm going to do in here, wrapped in percent marks, DDL. And I think we have everything that we need. Add in that quick return. Okay, so now when I run it, I now have a list of five different colors. And if I select that green color, and then if I press this button, it should change this black background to green. And there we go. And I can cycle through. Let's go red, blue, and so on. So I think that's where I'm going to cut this one here. And on the next one, we'll go into the alternative submission method. Um, and then from there, we'll get into much more complicated stuff. All right, that's it for this one. Have a good evening, and I'll see you in the next one.